this year. But sometimes the more we watch, the more we avert our eyes. Just watch North Carolina Republican Tom Tillis debating Democratic U.S. Senator Kay Hagan this Wednesday night. And watch Hagan's response to him. That's reality, and that's math, and that's something that Kay needs to accept. Kay's answer uh, leads me to believe she hadn't been in North Carolina lately. Kay's math just doesn't add up. But here's something that you should know a lot about being a senior appropriations chair, Kay. You know, Kay, if you if you actually read the budget, you know, I just think again that uh, that Senator Hagan really needs to understand and maybe spend some more time back in the state. I'm actually insulted by his comments. I was a vice president at a bank. I wrote billion dollar state budgets in the state of North Carolina. I understand math. Even when I was a teenager, I worked at my dad's tire store and did layaway for people buying tires. I understand math. Anyways, one North Carolina reporter wrote, Tom Till has stopped just short of calling Kay Hagan little lady. Anyway, talking down to your female opponent may not be the best strategy. Remember what happened when Vice President George Herbert Walker Bush attempted to explain something to his rival Geraldine Farrar back in 84. Let me help you with the difference, Ms. Ferraro, between Iran and the embassy in Lebanon. Iran, we were held by a foreign government. In, e in, e in Lebanon, you had a wanton terrorist action where the government opposed it. Let me just say, first of all, that I almost resent Vice President Bush, your patronizing attitude that you have to teach me about foreign policy. Casey Hines at MSNBC, political correspondent. Jonathan Capehart is an opinion writer with the Washington Post. Let me help you with your answer to this question. <laughs> I mean, there's something, I think I he learned so that from Roger Ailes, because Roger Ailes <laughs> got him to say, let me help you with that one, Pierre, when he's running against <laughs> Pete DuPont. Well, I will say on the, the S Senator Hagan and Tom Tillis, I mean, he couldn't address her that way on the Senate floor if, you know, he, if well, he were so. to actually get here. I mean, Senator Reid got in trouble for that, for addressing any senator, male or female, uh, by their first name. It's considered well, disrespectful. Use some psycho b uh, babble if you have to, because we all use it here. Was he doing that to put her down to show that he was so familiar and unimpressed with her personage that he would just dismiss her as somebody to cocktail? But hey, Kay, come over here. You got to hear this joke. Well, what kind of strange? I think it's odd. I call every senator senator unless mm -hmm. they tell me not to. And then I and the only guy who ever told me not to was Pat Monahan. <laughs> the rest of them say he said call me Pat. They're always. I, I I think you give the person their title. Well, you know, after all, he's going for that title. In, in part of the clip you showed, he he addressed her as Senator Hagan. He did do that throughout the throughout the debate sparingly. But the thing, the reference that he made, the very first reference to the senator in his opening remarks was K Hay. That to me it struck me as whoa, that's unbelievably is that uh, her nickname familiar. To friends? No, I think he maybe just ma made it up. But it, I, it to me it struck me as as disrespectful and probably just set the tone. He just came off as rather uh, highfalutin, smug, uh, and yeah. probably trying to prove that oh, I'm not impressed by you. I'm this. I'm the well, speaker. The, You're just a senator who's lost touch with the constituents. Well, first of all, you take a shot once or twice, but he kept taking that shot. You have it. It's only a 45 minute plane ride. I'm sure Kay Hagan, <laughs> the senator, has been down there an awful lot the last six years, right? Right. The idea that she's never been to North Carolina, like it's somewhere at a mo billions of miles away, is ludicrous. Yeah. Well, and it's such a fine line too. I mean, as we've seen in, in these those other clips you showed. I mean, this can really backfire pretty easily on a male candidate who comes too close to that line. I mean, we remember Hillary Clinton and, and Lazio here in the debate. Thanks getting for into queuing a it up. <laughs> <laughs> Casey, here, heavy handed tactics can backfire, as you said, Casey. Back in 2000, Republican Congressman Rick Lazio crossed into Hillary Clinton's debate space, pushing at her a sign to camp as a campaign pledge. He wanted to sign it like divorce papers. Watch this. Very I'm not well. asking you to admire it, I'm asking you to sign it. Well, I would be happy to when you give me the well, right signed letters. Right here, right here. Would you give right me? Right here, sign it right now. Well, we'll, we'll shake, we'll shake no, on no, this, No, no, I want your signature, because I think that everybody wants to see you signing something that you said you were for. He's leaning into her there. Lazio, in a 2008 interview that's eight years later with Newsday, the newspaper called it a mistake, saying, even when your opponent is tough as nails and there's no way they're going to be intimidated by a challenge or a comment, the audience may not see it that way. Jonathan? Right, no, that's absolutely right. And I think um, he probably thought he was doing the right thing. But I remember watching that debate uh, at home in New York. And the more I watched that particular clip, the more uncomfortable I got. I wasn't afraid that he was going to do something to Hillary Clinton. I wasn't afraid that Hillary Clinton couldn't hold her own, but the optics of it was really, really bad.
people pick so up on the rules? those types of cues. Well, I mean, they're, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> they're always evolving, right? But I think that in the larger picture here, and you'll hear um, both Democrats and Republicans talk about this, this is the kind of thing that discourages women from running for office in the first place. Really? And one of the things that, you know, they talk about as far as one of the reasons, main reasons why there aren't as many women members of Congress as there might otherwise be is because they don't step up in the first place. They have trouble recruiting well, I agree with that. They're not as many candidates. Right, and so you see these kinds of situations where you know they're having to stand there and, and respond to someone who is sort of trying to knock them down a peg. I mean, wh why would that be? Board, the what's the reaction? If you were running the ad, you were working for Senator Hagan. Would you run that guy's Tom Tillis, the Speaker Tillis's performance in that debate in your ads? Would you run ads and say this is no way to treat a person who's running for as a senator? Is it that bad as behavior you can use it against him? And, and, and I don't. I don't think so. I mean, it's not like George uh, Herbert Walker Bush's treatment of Geraldine Ferraro. He said after it's, I kicked her ass or something. Right. No, he, said, he, he said that after the debate, and then he, he and then he, I'm sorry, he apologized. That's what he, said. he did say that. He had to apologize after yeah. that. So if I were Kay Hagan, I wouldn't use that in the ad. And to answer your question about how how should a male candidate uh, treat a female uh, opponent? Look to Vice President Joe Biden and his debate the the debate well. with, with uh, Sarah Palin. That's how you do it. Treat your opponent with respect. Thank you, Casey Hunt and Jonathan Capert. And we'll be right back after this. You count on your...